Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello and welcome to the program today. My name's Greg Fritz and I've got good news for you again today. We are talking about Jesus, teaching on Jesus our Savior. This has been a very long uh, time uh, t of teaching and we've done many, many different lessons on this subject. I've never been able to get into the subject of Jesus like I have on these programs. It's been a very exciting journey. Uh, this is actually just part of what we're doing here as we go through the story of man's redemption. I call it the greatest story ever told. And we've been talking about Jesus, the person of Jesus, the identity of Jesus, His union with the church. And I've been using uh, natural illustrations. Jesus many times used natural illustrations to bring to light spiritual truths. And there are four natural analogies that He uses to describe our relationship to Him. One is He is the vine and we're the branches. And that talks about or illustrates our union with Christ. And the other is He's the head and we're the body. That illustrates our oneness with Christ. And we're talking about that one today. But we're going to go on and talk about how He's the groom and we're the bride. This illustrates His intense love for the church. And then finally we'll talk about how He's the shepherd and we're His sheep. And this analogy illustrates His care and His protection of His people. It's a beautiful picture. All, all four of these are beautiful pictures of our relationship to Jesus. And we share a closeness, a kinship, a oneness with Jesus that we uh, don't share with any other person in the world. He is our Savior. He is our Master. The Bible says we're in Him and He's in us. The Bible says if any man is joined into the Lord, He's one spirit. And so we've talked a little bit about how He's the head and we're the body. And the first point we made was simply this, that in order to be part of the body of Christ, you need to get direction from the head. If you're not getting direction from the head, any involuntary movement in the body, any movement in the body that's not initiated by the head really is a twitch. It's, it's an involuntary muscle movement. And it might move, but it doesn't accomplish anything. So in order to be successful and fruitful, we want to get our direction from the head of the church. There's no better place to get it from. You know, in the Old Testament, they had to get direction from prophets. They had to have Moses go up on a mountain and come and tell them what God said. But in the New Testament, we're part of the body of Christ. And He speaks to us directly by His Spirit. It's a powerful form of communication. It's the original wireless communication. And it goes from spirit to spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, the Bible says they are the sons of God. Then we moved on to talk about how if you're part of the body of Christ, then we need to strive for unity. Unity is important to the Lord. He doesn't like schisms or, or divisions in the body. And we have a lot to do with that. And there are two things that we're bringing out here that cause division in the body of Christ. And I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll start in verse 12. As the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we've all been to drink into one Spirit. For in fact... The body is not one member, but many. So we're getting to the point here where he begins to list these different types of members of the body. He says in verse 15, If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? So the first lie that's told here. And, and people fall for this all the time, is they realize they're different, they're not like somebody else, and they feel inferior. They feel as if because they can't perform or do, or they don't have the gifts and talents that somebody else has, that somehow they're of less value. And that's just not true. All members of the body of Christ are equally valued and loved by the head of the body. He loves his hands as much as he loves his feet. 
He loves his arms as much as he loves his, his legs. He loves his knees. He loves his elbow. But I mean, think about your body. Is there a part of your body that you just say, yeah, just cut it off? I'm not saying improve it, replace it. I'm saying, you know what? I don't really like my feet. Let's just cut them off. You wouldn't do that. You know, they may not be the most beautiful feet in the world, but they're my feet, and I don't want to lose them. I want them right where they are. And the Lord feels that way about His body. He values His body. There are no inferior members of the body of Christ. We were all bought with the same price. Jesus paid the same price for you as He paid for me. That means we're of equal value. Isn't that great? Now, our functions are different. What we do, our, our actions, our gifts and talents are different, but our value is no different. This helps create unity. Because really, you can't value other people if you don't value yourself. You need to see that there's value in your life, in your being part of the body of Christ. And so he illustrates this by saying, you know, don't get discouraged and say, well, I'm not an I, therefore I'm not of the body. His point here is, if the whole body were an eye, then where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? So we can't all be the same or the body wouldn't function. If we were all one big eyeball, the body couldn't hear, or it couldn't smell, it couldn't walk, it couldn't really accomplish anything but see. So he's just saying, look, you're different, and God knows it, and he likes it. He likes the diversity. It's people that focus on differences and develop resentment. We need to change that in the body of Christ. And I want to I wanna encourage you to change it right where you are. You need to value yourself. And we also value other people. And we're going to get to that now. So the first lie or the first feeling that people may have as, as a different member of the body is that they're inferior. But on the, on the flip side of that, if you go to verse 21, you see the opposite. In verse 21, he changes his exhortation and he begins to talk about people who feel superior. Now, I'm sure you're not one of those people, but you may know somebody who feels a little bit superior. They feel like everybody really ought to be just like them. That creates division too, and that's just as wrong as feeling inferior. Here's what he says, verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, nor the head to the feet, I don't need you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. We need each other. We need each other. And so when you begin to feel like, you know what, nobody does what I do. Nobody does what our group does. Or our group stands for this. And everybody else is inferior to us because we've got this revelation. Or we've got this revelation. Or we do this in our services. Or we do that in our services. Listen, we're not all the same. There are many varieties in the body of Christ. And there's nothing wrong with variety. There's nothing wrong with differences. I, I believe that's why God made so many different kinds of preachers. There, there are all kinds. Of, in fact, he says it here in 1 Corinthians 12. There are different ministries. There are different administrations. There are different operations. Why? Because not one ministry can do it all. Not one operation can do it all. Not one administration can do it all. So there are pastors that pastor differently. They may have that same gift, but they do it differently. And you can't say, you know, when you travel like I do, you see every kind, shape, size, and manner of pastoring churches. In fact, you go to a church, they're really doing it right, and you think, well, this is the way to do it. And then you go to a different church, and they do it totally different, and it's working for them. There's tremendous variety in the body of Christ. We don't have the right to feel inferior because we're not like someone else. But we don't have the right to feel superior because somebody else is not like us. The same rules apply. We need each other. We need differences. As my pastor says, uh, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Not about me, about him. But I can say the same thing. I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. I'm not going to appeal to everybody. So God made preachers that are totally different than me that will appeal to people that have different tastes than you, because I believe you like me. But there are people out there that don't, and they'd rather hear the Word of God or receive from somebody else. And you know what? God's fine with that. He just wants us to be okay with it. You know, one ministry is not enough to do the job. One man can't do everything. 
You know, if they could have, I think God would have left everything in Abraham's hands. He would have just caused Abraham live forever, and he could have just done everything. Or Moses. Moses and his descendants could have just run everything, and we wouldn't need anybody else. But God didn't want that. God wants every generation to raise up people that form the body of Christ, that fulfill the will of the head of the body, the, the Lord, that, that all work in unison, that all work in, in sync. They all work because they respond to the same head, the same Lord. Boy, if you could just see this, it would bring so much unity. It would remove so many forms of resentment. Listen, there are groups out there and streams that are different than, than us, and they, but they're responding to the same head, the same signals. They're doing their thing, and we do our thing. We need to respect each other. Let me read it again in the words of Paul. Verse 21, The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather. Much rather. He says, no, no, no. Much rather, <laughs> those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. So I don't know if you feel like you're weaker or stronger, but if you feel like you're weaker, I'm telling you, you're necessary. And if you feel like you're stronger than those that you think are weaker, they're necessary. We need each other. Can we just be big enough to embrace everybody? Boy, the world needs to hear that message, don't they? You know, the truth is, the church ought to teach the world how to become one. The church needs to teach the world how to love one another. We're supposed to be known by our love, one for another. There's so much division today. There's so much resentment. I'll tell you, the enemy is trying to drive wedges between groups of people, and I don't like it. Why? I, I've been everywhere. <laughs> Not everywhere, but I've been so many places, and I've seen so many different kinds of people, and I can tell you they're all beautiful. They're all part of the body of Christ. The blood of Jesus washes away the differences. The blood of Jesus creates one body. Different members, different parts, but one beautiful body. And He loves every single part of it. So don't have an inferiority complex and think that you can't do anything so you're not worth anything. And don't have a superiority complex and think that everybody needs to do it like you do. We're just not all going to do that. But we can all follow the head and do what we're called to do and do what we are gifted to do. And then the job will get done. Let me read you a couple other scriptures. This, this really brings this to light in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. It says, there, In Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. Now he's talking about value. When he's talking about the diversity in the body, he's talking about activities. And he said that, activities, operations, administrations. He's talking about functions, what we do. But here he's talking about equality. That's a big word today. Let me tell you something. In Christ, th there will never be across the board equality in this world. It, 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 sinful humanity just won't let that happen. I'm sorry to tell you. There are going to be different different values placed on different performances and different people groups and different nations and I'm and and it's not right inequality in any form is not right but you know what when you get in Christ that's gone it's completely removed as far as value goes in the body of Christ we're not all identical but we're all of equal value that's an important distinction let me read it again galatians 3:28 there's neither Jew nor Greek. Now, the Jews and Greeks did not get along. They didn't appreciate each other. But in Christ, that's gone. There's neither slave nor free. You can't have a bigger social disparity between free people and slaves. And slavery's wrong. Let me just go on the record and say that. And I'm glad it's gone and, I, and, and it seems to resurface. But I, I pray to God that slavery of all kinds would be eliminated on the earth. But in these days, there were slaves and there were free people. And you couldn't get any, any further apart than slaves and free. But in Christ, that's washed away. There's no difference. No difference between a slave or a free man in Christ. Isn't that amazing? This is equality like the world is hoping for. 
reaching for, dreaming of, and it's ours in Christ. He goes on to say something even bigger than that. He says, in Christ, there's neither male nor female. Boy, that's a hot topic today. Wow, has that ever become a, a real problem? There are differences in this world between male and female, and there are a lot, there's a lot of tension, a lot of problems that have arisen from that difference. But in Christ, that fundamental difference, we're born that way. That fundamental difference between humans is gone in Christ. He's just saying, look, when you get born again, when you're washed by the blood, you're as valuable as anybody else, and everybody else is as valuable as you are. It's inside the walls of the church that we should show the world how to love one another, how to appreciate one another. And then from church to church, from ministry to ministry, we don't have to agree on everything and nobody's asking anybody to compromise their beliefs. But it's important that we appreciate one another and realize maybe God's called them to do something different than He's called me to do. Maybe God's gifted them to do some things differently than what I do. In fact, maybe God's given them revelation that I don't have to do what they're doing and He's given me revelation that they don't have to do what I'm doing. And I'm not going to beat them over the head because they don't see things like I do. We need to appreciate one another. We're all one in the body of Christ. In Christ, we are equal. He's made us different because He wanted us to be different. That's not bad. That's a good thing. You're not better than me because you're different than me. I'm not better than you because I'm different than you. We're all one in Christ. We're all of equal value because He's the one that places value on us. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. I wanted to get these in. I just, these are just fantastic truths that fit with this whole theme, this analogy. He's the head and we're the body. The body shouldn't fight each other. The body's got to work in unity to, to accomplish anything. You know, when the body parts, organs begin to fight one another, we call that disease. Well, the body of Christ doesn't need and deserve disease. I'm telling you, we need to work together so that we're part of the answer and not part of the problem. Romans 12, 4 says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Can you see the unity that, that God is, is desiring here? He's saying, look, it's one body, many members, one body. And this is Romans. Sounds just like the message in 1 Corinthians 12. And so the Bible is very consistent in this. Uh, there's, no, there's no religion like Christianity to lift everyone to the same level. We're all part of the body of Christ. We've all been raised with Him and seated with Him. We all rule and reign with Him. We're all joint heirs with Him. All of us have an equal connection to the head of the body, the Lord Jesus. Isn't that powerful? You know, God had to use these analogies. When Jesus taught, He used natural illustrations all the time to help people understand. But these are specifically designed for the body of Christ, for us to understand our relationship to Jesus. Because it's special. It's deep. It's multifaceted. It's amazing. So uh, he said, I'm going to read verse 5 again. We being many are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. And then verse 6, Romans 12 verse 6, and I took this from the Message Bible and I like the way it says this. It says, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. <laughs> That's great advice. You're, you're going to waste your time if you're trying to be something you aren't. There's no point in that. The only reason you would do that is inferiority. Not realizing that you are unique and that you are an equal member of the body of Christ just like anyone else. I love something that I heard that Billy Graham said and I've repeated it many times, but somebody came to him and said, Billy Graham, you're such a great man. You've won so many people to Christ. Your reward in heaven is going to be so great, so awesome. You're such a, an important figure in history. And your reward in heaven is going to be amazing. And he says, 
not necessarily any more amazing than anyone else. And they said, well, what do you mean? He said, listen, I'm just doing what God told me to do. He told me to preach the gospel. He told me to hold crusades and win the lost. But my reward won't be any greater than the little lady that cleans the church if that's what God told her to do. Because if she'll do what God told her to do, she'll be rewarded, a full reward, just like I get rewarded for doing what God told me to do. Isn't that interesting? That takes so much pressure off of us. Listen, you may have had it in your mind that if you don't become a, a big-time preacher, you're not going to be successful. You're not going to be fruitful. You're not going to really get anything out of life. And that's just not true. You need to be what God called you to be. If He called you to, to, to clean the church, or if He called you to a, a secular job, if He called you to be a housewife, if He called you to be a house husband, if He's called you to, 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 to in any line of work whatsoever, as long as you obey God, you get a full reward. I thank God for men like Billy Graham, men that follow in His footsteps because God's called them to that type of ministry, but we can't all be Billy Graham. If we were, where would be the smelling? Where would be the hearing? We can't all be great singers. Thank God for that. I appreciate great singers, but I'm not one of them. Now, I'm not going to quit my job and take all my money and get singing lessons so I too could be a great singer if that's not my gift and talent. They say everybody can sing, and I believe that. Everybody can sing, but everybody can't sing as well as everybody else. Find out what God's called you to do. Be comfortable with it and realize. Let me just read this again from the message because it says it so well. Let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other. And this really does deal with these two issues of inferiority or superiority, which we've covered. We shouldn't be envious of somebody else because of what they do, or we shouldn't be prideful because we do something that they don't do. Both are wrong and both cause division. Without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. <laughs> That's great advice right out of the Word of God. It's amazing how the Word just brings things, uh, brings it home and makes it so clear. It's so simple but so true. Let me read another scripture. I love this in Psalms. It's Psalm 46 verse 4. And it's been applied to this um, particular subject of diversity. Again, we need to celebrate diversity. I love going to other countries. I was in Africa not long ago, and I ate ugali. I ate beans. I ate these greens that were seasoned with African seasoned, beautiful, wonderful greens. I don't know that you can even get them here. And, and I asked the waiter, I said, can you tell me what do you call these greens? They're delicious. And he said, spinach. I said, oh, oh, okay. Well, I had spinach. I had African spinach. I had ugali, which is a local dish. I had other things that, 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 were, that were purely African. I loved it. I love their music. I love their people. I love their weather. I love so much about the Africans. I've been to Asia. And I love Asia. I love the Asian people. They are sweet people, loyal people, wonderful people. I've been to Mexico. In fact, my wife and I go there. Anytime we can get away, we'll go to Mexico. I love the Mexican people. They're so sweet. They're so wonderful. They're so kind. And they all have their separate foods. They all have their separate ways that they sing and, and celebrate. And it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's, it's that way because God made it that way. He doesn't resent people groups. He loves them, and we should do the same. We're not all the same, but we can love and celebrate diversity. i got to get to this scripture. Psalm 46, verse 4. There is a stream, or there is a river, whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. There is a river whose streams... That's such a, a good picture of unity and diversity. We are different streams. I'm not going to deny that. To say that we're all alike, that we all should be alike, is not true. We're all different. We have our own flavor. We have our own ethnicity. We have our own origin. We have our own way of doing things. Different streams, but all these streams make up 
one river, the river of God, and they make glad the city of God. Isn't that awesome? Many streams, one river. Let me take you to one more scripture before we close today in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. And this is the New Living Translation. It says, He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. <laughs> That's a great goal, isn't it? Can you see God's picture, God's view, God's perspective? He sees us as the body. Jesus is the head and we're the body. That, that is a beautiful illustration of our oneness, not only with the Lord, but with each other. And I believe nothing would make Him happier than that his, the members of His body love and respect and appreciate one another. Well, that's all the time we have for today. It's been a joy to be with you. I look forward to our next program, and until then, may God's best be yours. Jesus used the Bible to prove who He was to the early church. These same truths can be used today to establish His identity beyond any doubt. Order your copy today of Jesus the Messiah. Want more good news? Visit our website anytime, gregfritz.org, for more teaching materials. That's gregfritz.org. I hope you've enjoyed the teaching on this program as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. And after all we've covered to this point, there's so much more I want to say. And if you like this and you want me to continue bringing these programs to you, you could help me. And you could help me by doing three things. One, you could go to my Facebook page and like us or follow us. That'll give us an instant uh, knowledge that you're out there, instant feedback, and I would love to know that. Number two, go to our website and check out our products. If you purchase a product, you're going to help me make more programs and it'll be a blessing to you also. And number three, if you were to give us, go to the donate button and give us a one-time gift or, or become a monthly partner. That would go so far in helping me continue to do what I'm doing and take the good news to the world. So thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing you on the next program. If you've been blessed by this program, we invite you to donate and partner with Greg Fritz Ministries. Visit our website, gregfritz.org, and become a partner today. Coming up next on Good News with Greg Fritz. And so spiritually, we are one with Christ already if you're born again. Spiritually speaking, this is already true. But, but, but what's, what's going to happen in the days to come is we're going to be with Him physically, person to person, forever and ever and ever. We are going to be caught away and become the eternal bride of Christ. Now, if that makes you uncomfortable, I'm sorry, but it, it is a beautiful picture if you can get over the fact that you're, you don't feel like a bride. It's a beautiful picture. Listen, you want to be related to Jesus in this way. There's no higher honor He could give us. There's no higher uh, title he could bestow upon us. What he's doing is telling all the principalities and powers, all the angels and demons in the, in the universe, he's saying, I love this people more than any other.